Welcome back folks. So I've got here a new acquisition to the lab. This is a, a, a well-used Anatech model 50-1D. That means it's 50 volts, one amp, and the D means it's a dual supply. So these supplies are made in Canada, were made in Canada by Anatech. Anatech is a strange company. Anatech dates back to the 70s and uh, they in the 80s they incorporated in the US as well they incorporated as a non-resident California stock company which means there were partners involved operating out of Delaware so I don't know if, if the the latest Anatech company is a spin-off of that and then Anatech in Canada started off building lab grade power supplies and went on later in the uh, late 80s and 90s to build uh, professional MIDI equipment. But I, I think they've since uh, suffered uh, a demise and are gone. But the quality of the stuff they produced was second to none. And this here is a perfect example. Now this one came to me in working condition. We can see that the voltages are working. If we turn the amperage down, it shuts off the voltage. They come with lovely 10 turn pots on the voltage and I believe the current one single turn and uh, they feel like they're wire wound but today I, I just want to pull it apart get into it look into it see how dirty it is and clean it up and uh, check to make sure that all the capacitors and stuff like that are in good operating condition not swelling and leaking oh uh, like anything really well thought out uh, this doesn't require much to get into it like if you look at fluke meters especially uh, they got the one screw on the back and it looks like Anatech kind of kind of followed that. And we have a single screw to remove. And then this top should slide right off. The case, I should say, should slide right off. There we go. Yeah, I have a, you know some experience with, with a single supply, an Anatech single supply. They're exactly the same. I mean, this has just got two of them in there uh, in, in a bigger case. So I have, I have dealt with these before. And, in my past. Before going to university, I was, I was working as an engineering technologist. I had done a college degree in it and uh, a college diploma in it. I was working there. So I have worked in electronics in the past. This looks like it's been into. It looks like, uh, almost looks like, I don't know if it's true, but it almost looks like these uh, 2N3055s have been uh, replaced. I wonder why that would be. Or at least uh, somebody has put a fresh heat sink compound on them. These here, the 2N6577s, they're uh, a power Darlington. And they, they drive the 2N3055s, which is the pass transistor. Uh, it's a little bit overkill on the current and the wattage rating for this power supply, but definitely not on the voltage. I mean, this, this is 50 volts output, so it must have something larger than that going into it. And these have a maximum uh, collector emitter voltage of about 70 volts. So they got, they're close on the voltage, but the, the power rating and the current ratings are well above what would be needed here. It looks like somebody has been recently into this. It looks like this paw prints in all that dust. And yeah, indeed the heat sink is kind of loose on there. There's two screws at the back here and two up there going to the meter panel. That'll remove the... Uh, Heat sink. Well, a little bit dust inside. It looks like it's fairly well put together. Let's see if we can identify some of these components here. These capacitors are Sprog. Uh, you don't get much better than that. The small ones appear to be Rubicon. Again, you don't get much better than that. Got Zantec transformers. It's all co top quality stuff. Spectral potentiometers. Yeah, this thing is this, this thing is very, very well put together and it doesn't look like there's any swelling on any of these capacitors at all. So yeah, very nicely done. I'm just going to clean this down a little bit. I'm going to get some air in here and blow it out and, and clean off that and come back here. So I got it all cleaned up pretty nicely and uh, I'm quite happy with that. I cleaned up the front panel a little bit. I cleaned off the, not to mention these two are very, very nice with these binding posts. Everything about this power supply is just top drawer. 
yeah it's it's quite quite a nice piece so I'm just gonna pop this back together and uh, I'm gonna try it out a little bit in the meantime I also cleaned off this it looks like it has some stickers attached to it at some point one here one here which have uh, left some residue in there I can't seem to get out but I also found that on the bottom of it there's only two feet and they're in bad shape they're moving around the screws are too long for them so I t I really don't know what's the garden about that but I have found four nice little feet that I can use and uh, some more appropriate screws that would also fit these nuts as well so I'm going to mount those up too and we'll put all back together and then we'll, we'll run it through some brief testing just to see what what's going on with it okay folks we've got a, a DC load set at a constant resistance at 50 ohms connected and we have an oscilloscope uh, you should be able to see both of them up there at the top so the first thing we're going to do we're going to check it for turn on performance so I've got the voltage on the the power supply set to 50 volts and we're going to then have a look quickly at how it turns on to a full one amp load and full voltage and we're going to record that on the scope there so we should be able to go for the first one I'm going to do three that's a little weird but it, yeah there's nothing harmful there nothing harmful there at all okay let's have a look at that again that's looking a bit better let's try it again that's nice let me give it another couple of shots we don't have any major over voltages coming on here no aberrations that uh, look like it could damage uh, a device under test so it seems to be pretty well behaved let's quickly switch over to the other channel too and, and see what it does that's good that's good too a little bit nicer than the other one but still the other one had nothing to complain about okay so that's pretty good I'm gonna try it down at about half the voltage let me set up the scope for that and we'll come right back okay so I've got the, the scope is now set at 5 volts per division and the trigger set at 5 volts and let's go that's pretty nice also nice yeah very well behaved try the other channel too set it to 25 volts and let's pop over there and have a look A little bit weird. <laughs> okay. Every now and then it does a little bit of weird stuff, but it doesn't do anything dangerous, which is the important thing. All right, well, let's try a, a much lower voltage. So let's go down to maybe 5 volts or 10 volts. We'll try 10 volts quickly run through both channels on that let me set up the scope for that I'll be back we're set up to look at things at 10 volts let's uh, try the first one yeah it's not too bad it does have a, a slightly different curve than the the other channel but again like I say there's nothing uh, nothing harmful there third time okay now I'll set this one up for 10 volts. Move our probes over. Yeah, this channel is a little bit prettier. Now it's got a little thing in it there. So they're just about the same. All right, 
So let me set up to look at some noise figures here. Um, if you're a return uh, viewer of this channel, you know that I have some noise issues in the lab. So we're going to set it up first without anything turned on to have a look at the ambient noise and then we can subtract that out because uh, we're looking at peak to peak, it's easy to do. Okay, so now we've got the, the scope is set up for 50 millivolts per division. We've got it on uh, AC coupling and we're looking at the ambient noise. Power supply is turned off and it looks like we've got about 40 millivolts of ambient noise. So I think we can, uh, yeah, we can feel safe at just subtracting that out because we're working with peak to peak here. And um, right now I have this set up at uh, 50 volts and uh, no current limiting on. So we're going to turn it on and see if that increases the noise at all. Let that settle out and we'll get a new average here. So it looks like we've gone up a, uh, oh, it keeps going down here. We've gone up to about 44. So we're up about 40 millivolts right at the, the maximum. Let's um, we look at it maybe at 25 volts. Get a new average on that. About five millivolts. Turn it off there, see if their ambient has changed at all. Yeah. That's not too bad. Again, for a 46 year old power supply. Now let's see what happens when we uh, bring current limiting into it. So let's go back up to worst case up at the top of the voltage range. And I'll bring in the current limiting. Okay, a new average on that. And uh, it looks like we're running up around about a hundred. So we're subtracting out that 40, so about 60 millivolts of ripple. And that's at 60 Hertz there. That's not bad. Try it down a little bit lower. Of course, the lower the voltage, the lower the current that we have to go with. I'm just going to keep this at the load at 50, 50 ohms here. So that's exactly the same. Okay, let's quickly try out the other side here. What do we have here? Let's go back up to 50 volts on this side here. We'll turn the current up to maximum. And let's just have a look at the basic noise. We'll turn off the supply again to get a, a reading of our ambient. So our ambient over here is about, again, around about 40 millivolts, 42 millivolts. Let's turn on the supply. And get a new average. Yeah, so we're, yeah, back up to around about 45 millivolts. So either side is producing around about 3 millivolts of noise when it's not limiting. We break down the current limit again and another new average. So again, around about 60 millivolts of of Ripple. Yeah, I'm quite happy with this. I don't see anything uh, I should be concerned about here. I mean, at some point in time, we may need to recap it, but uh, I'm not going to worry about that now until it really starts to misbehave. For the $70 Canadian that I paid for this thing, I think I got a, an incredible bargain. It may not be 100% within the specification it was built to back in the 70s but uh, I'm willing to bet it's pretty close. This is going to be very good. Thanks for joining me, guys. Please like and subscribe, tell others about the channel, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much, bye.